Hey Ted here, I just wanted to go over uh, this F-150 four-stroke and some of the anodes where they're at. Obviously the ones down on the cavitation plate, one under the transom assembly, and there is one in here, one on the bottom here. There is also another anode here on the exhaust cavity. So there's three of them that you really need to change in the power head that prevents the salt water from eating out the inside. They work real well too. So I want to change the anodes in the power head here. Easy enough, just starts with taking this cover off. Just it's held in place by a couple of rubber uh, grommets. And just pull it off, get that out of the way. Then there are Then I've already taken the 12 millimeter bolts. It takes a 12 millimeter socket, should I say, not a 12 millimeter bolt. There's one here, one down below. Take that bolt out. I'm gonna grab the inside where the bolt was with a pair of needle nose pliers and just give a little wiggle and take it out. There's a rubber grommet that goes with it, as you can see. So these have gotten corroded pretty well. The problem is they get coated, so they're not gonna do their job. So I'm gonna reuse this rubber seal if it's okay, but I'm definitely gonna change these two anodes. Well, they're both in about the same shape. Um, don't try to clean them and reuse them. It just doesn't make sense because they've got a coating on them, which they're all so porous that so all of the little holes and uh, areas inside, you can't get that cleaned out. I tried using other anodes and I found that only the Yamahas really fit properly. So basically what there is is a bolt here on the back side. You have an Allen head for the anode, and you can unthread the anode off the bolt, thread the new one on, and as you'll see, it's recessed to fit inside. So we're gonna change those and put those back in. Okay, I'm gonna take the old anode out. I've got my 10 millimeter Allen wrench here. Take an impact gun just take that right off like that and it'll come right apart no problem all right I've taken it out and I have the piece that holds the anode in the anode it takes a 10 millimeter allen wrench to hold it and there is a takes a 10 millimeter socket and just take the bolt out tap on this this will come off then you can take the rubber a seal off of it and we need to clean this up so I want to clean all of that oxidation out of this housing just take a screwdriver and scrape it out so as I take this and I clean this out the big reason I want to make sure I've got a good surface here because the anode has to contact this surface and then the bolt ties the anode to this and this bolt ties it to the power head. So I wanna make sure I have good continuity between the anode and the surface and the block. Otherwise it's not gonna do its job. So spend that extra minute cleaning this surface up so you get mostly bare metal out of it. Um, a plastic bristle brush will work well. Do not use a steel wire brush. That's not a good idea on aluminum because you can impregnate that with steel and that gives you a third metal. You want the aluminum, the anode, and the block that's the same material. Okay, we'll clean that up and put those back in. All right, we have this pretty well cleaned up, and one thing I wanted to make note was that these uh, anodes that are made by Yamaha, they are an aluminum anode. They're not a zinc anode, so I did purchase some aftermarket ones just to see. I bought a set of them, they did not fit properly. They didn't interface properly. Um, and they were also made of zinc, which is not a good idea when we're dealing with an aluminum area. 
that has water that's flowing through it. We just want the most reactive component that we have. So I would not buy anything else than the Yamaha anode just for that purpose. It's a few dollars more. It's not worth the aggravation of finding out it doesn't fit. Trying to modify a, an anode to fit the bracket is silly. So just stick with the Yamaha ones. So I got it all back on there. I'm gonna put this rubber grommet back on. And the one thing I always do is put some grease on the outside of this grommet and that aids it to slide into the block of the power head. And then you're all set just to tighten that bolt up. When you're gonna put these back in, you can also put the rubber ring inside if you wish, or you can leave it on the outside and grease it up. Either way works. Just slip them in there. The rubber grommet gets crushed out by the anode when you bolt it up. So once it's centered in there, just put the bolts in and tighten them up. When you're ready to take the anodes out, you want a long extension, maybe nine inches and a 12 millimeter socket. And that gives you the distance to take them out. But also when you're putting them back in, like I am now, you've got the room out here to get the bolts started. Because it's a recessed hole, I always want to make sure the bolts thread in all the way by hand. No impact guns here, folks. That way I know there's no interference. A touch of grease on the thread's a good idea for the next time you take it apart. <laughs> 